did it himself, really, or got, found a publisher ultimately. Published in 1896. Then he started a journal called The Belt and other things. And he then single-handedly, weird as it may seem, uh, he called a Zionist Congress by an organization he called the World Zionist Organization. He did all this himself. And of course, everyone from Eastern Europe was amazed that a Western Europe, and he was looked on as a Western European, would be involved in this, and a sophisticated doctorate Western European, totally assimilated person. And uh, they all came flocking uh, under his bed, and then he ran around into trying to negotiate as representative of the Jewish people with the Sultan of Turkey, Kaiser Wilhelm, King of Italy, Pope Pius. And then finally in 1903, as he says here in his introduction, the British government offered him Uganda. That's just amazing. He went to England and they actually made him an offer of Uganda. No, that doesn't mean they're going to throw all the Africans out of Uganda. There was enough land there, I suppose, that they thought that they could accommodate uh, settlers. And they were doing settlement work in Kenya and Rhodesia and places. So, I mean, I don't think he was thinking about what the Africans would think or not think or whatever. They offered him land in Uganda, put it that way, a large tract for a Jewish self-governing settlement. And you see, Herzl saw it as a sanctuary. I don't think he... he took a tremendous uh, beating on this at the Zionist Congresses. And that's where Weizmann comes in. He said, we're going to do Weizmann. Oh yeah, Weizmann revels in defeating Herzl at the Zionist Congresses on the Uganda issue. He loves the fact that he was able, with the other Eastern European Jews, to humiliate Herzl. They're all terribly jealous of Herzl because he's a Westerner, he's sophisticated, he's impressive, he's very tall, he's a big black beard, he's a very handsome man, you know, and he's just the opposite of all of what they're used to, and not someone who's humiliated or downtrodden or anything like that. So, uh, he discusses it here. There's a huge uh, conflict at the Zionist Congress, and they all said that it could only be Zion. It could only be in Zion, and they rejected the offer of sanctuary in Uganda. I don't think Herzl thought that as the final place. Now, was Herzl right or wrong? You can only know who knows what history would have been. Would they, if the Jews had had sanctuary in Uganda, could they have escaped uh, escaped the Holocaust? Would Hitler have let them go? Hitler was interested in the Madagascar project. He wanted to ship all the Jews off to Madagascar for, uh, for a start, but that never panned out. And then uh, at the Wannsee conference in Berlin, like they decided on the final solution. Would Hitler have been satisfied with shipping them all off? Uh, the British weren't going to have them all in Palestine, so that was never, a, they closed the gates. America closed the gates here. Wouldn't let any refugees in from Europe in the 30s. The great Roosevelt was really uh, somewhat of a racist, actually. Truman wasn't, but Roosevelt was. He was an aristocrat. He thought he was wonderful. Uh, and he didn't like Berman and didn't lower people in different colonies. Uh, and there was no Jewish refugees. They, they slammed the gates of America closed in the face of the Hitler phenomenon in the 30s. The Ship of Fools uh, describes the voyage of people who were locked at sea, couldn't land anywhere. I think they finally only could land in Cuba. It was a movie that was made on this matter. But it was a, it was a true historical episode. Anyway, he died in 1904 after he was rejected in 1903. Uh, he wasn't worn out. I think he got uh, uh, malaria in Palestine when he was there. He did wear himself out. He was only, uh, how old was he when he died? Uh, was, uh, huh? 44? 44. Yeah. Terrible loss to the Jewish people. You know, this is what happens to people. Great figures are removed prematurely. It 
happened in the Lincoln thing. I don't think uh, the 1875 date would have been uh, uh, throwing in the towel if Lincoln had been taking care of situation from 1865 to 75. But he was removed, I believe, by a southern plot. Uh, they, 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 they wanted to kill everyone they could in the government, and they uh, succeeded in the most awful way for all of us uh, on that particular point, and we all paid the price. Anyway, here's the first entry in his diary in 1895. This is lovely to, uh, to read, but on the other side, it shows he's a little bit unsure of himself. This is right after seeing the Dreyfus uh, degradation and um, getting the original idea and then putting it into writing. I have been occupied for some time past with a work which is of immeasurable greatness. He knows that his work is of immeasurable greatness. I cannot tell today whether I shall bring it to a close. It has the appearance of a gigantic dream. But for days and weeks it has filled me saturated even my subconscious is possessed it accompanies me wherever i go broods above my ordinary daily converse looks over my shoulder at my petty comical journalistic work disturbs me intoxicates me though he admits that he's totally possessed by this idea Judenstein. what it will lead to is impossible to imagine but my experience tells me that it's something marvelous but then he says even as a dream and that i should write it down if not as a memorial to mankind, then for my own delight or meditation later on. You see, he's already taking it back. He doesn't. If the romance does not become a fact, at least the fact can become a romance. Title, the promised land. <laughs> this is only his diary. You know? But the fact is that he's aware that he's, uh, that he's totally possessed by this idea. So here we have on page 204, uh, the materials from um, the Jewish state. And this is the bedrock of what is known as political Zionism. Now, some of you were, my friend Mr. Bush over there and I were discussing in the break about um, uh, a hot ha will also do in this class, <coughs> who is basically Weitzman's teacher. Ahara took this name, like Ben Yehuda, but even more pretentious, I think. Uh, do you know what that name means? His name was Asher Greenberg, I think, but he took the name Ahara. Whose Hebrew is good enough that they can 